morning. It's a windy one today. It's the day before the race, and I'm just gonna do the normal easy jog. So, thinking maybe six kilometers and some strides, just to stretch it out a little bit. I brought the uh, GoPro chest mount, so I'm gonna wear that and see how that goes. And if you get some good footage, I'll wear it in the race tomorrow. Right, that's six kilometers done, just under 30 minutes. It was super windy out there. I was probably losing 20 seconds a kilometer into the headwind, which is like going up towards behind me. And then coming back down to where I am now, probably only gaining 10 seconds. So uh, if it's this windy tomorrow, we'll definitely lose some time. When you're, if you're going up, out and back into a headwind, or yeah, up a hill and down a hill, it's never gonna average out. You're always gonna go slow overall but I'm just gonna go back to the hotel now and I'll talk a little bit about the record I'm gonna be attempting tomorrow and also about how to adjust your time expectations in the heat as well all right so tomorrow's record fastest marathon while wearing handcuffs so the rule is they don't have to be behind your back as long as the handcuffs are attached to you that's fine and the time I have to beat is 3 hours 21 minutes and 55 seconds so the only tough part is I'm going to have to, the rule says you have to get an independent witness to lock the handcuffs and hold the keys. So we're going to find someone to do that and hope I can find them after the race to unlock me. Um, but yeah, 321, that should definitely be doable as around 304 in the last race. But um, in the last race, I had someone taking the photos for Guinness World Record requirement every two kilometers this race I'm gonna have to stop and do it myself so we're talking uh, six seven eight minutes I'm gonna lose there so in reality I need to run probably three thirteen or so or faster which should definitely be pretty comfortable but in the warm weather it um it makes it a lot more difficult so um oh yeah I should add like I am allowed to wear sweatbands as well. I've got another one somewhere which I have to find, but it's going to make it a lot more comfortable because Guinness World Records have to pre-approve what you wear, so I don't think they'll let you wear the fluffy pink handcuffs, so the, the metal ones might be kind of annoying um, on your arms after you know running for 42 kilometres. So uh, yeah, this one looks like it should be pretty comfortable like that. Um, but anyway, back to, to running in the heat. So we'll, it's probably going to be around about 20 degrees at the time of the race tomorrow, so it's 6.30 a.m. it starts at, but um, anything over probably 15 degrees, you're gonna slow down. 20 degrees, it's gonna be a noticeable difference, and you know, if you're running like 30 degrees or something, it's gonna be a huge difference to your time. So in the past, I've, kind of, I've tried to go up my pace that I run in cool weather. In hot weather, I didn't really know that it made such a big difference, but I've kind of, began to realize that you know you, you definitely have to lower your expectations in hot weather so now I'm just going to show you a website that I use which is a pretty helpful indicator on um, you know how to predict your time in hot weather this is fellrnr.com so it's got a quite a few different calculators and predictors in here but we're just going to focus on the heat impact predictor here so um, you just put in all your information depending on what distance you go for. So I'm going to put in information for my last race in Creville Corey. So it was 3.04 and 7 seconds I finished in. Now you can change this to Celsius and kilograms, but it just changed everything back into Imperial in the next page anyway. So we're just going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to say it was maybe around about 35 Fahrenheit by the end of the race. So it'll be one or two degrees and weight approximately 160 and mileage will put in 60 miles a week okay so I've scrolled all the way down to number six first at the top you'll see predicted race times so 
it'll give you um, an estimate of what you your times will be at different distances. So there we go at the same pace. It's saying oh, oh sorry, the same effort. It's saying I'll get a nineteen nineteen, the five k or a one twenty eight and a half marathon. You'll see it down below here anyway in the heat index adjustment. So I'm not sure I agree with this completely with the lower temperatures, but definitely the higher it gets, it does you know, it does dramatically increase your marathon time. So 40 Fahrenheit, that's four degrees Celsius. You see at 50 Fahrenheit, which is about 10 degrees, it says it jumps about five minutes up, but I wouldn't agree with that. I think 10 degrees is pretty good running conditions, but definitely as it gets more, like you see at 90, 90 Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, 332. So it's saying there's a 28 minute difference between your time. So I would agree with that. When it gets, probably hits about 20 degrees, you do notice a big jump up in your time. So tomorrow I'm gonna expect probably maybe 65 or so towards the end of the race. So that's, you know, so maybe 317, 318, it's gonna predict with the same effort. So I need to get under 321. So it shows you it's, yeah, you know, it's it's a bit more difficult than first thought, but um, I didn't yeah you know, I didn't put in a hundred percent effort. So if I really have to, I can go all out and destroy myself, and you know hopefully I should get there. But yeah, definitely when you are running in a hot race, you have to prepare for you know to lower your expectations. So um, if you look at the the other tables though. See half marathon. Now, even if you're running in 90 degree heat, you're only going to lose three minutes. So the marathon is totally different. You're gonna, you might feel good for the first half, then you just fade really badly. So it's important you adjust your expectations. But if we have a look here at the top, it is saying it is just an estimate, and it is, you know, based on research for faster runners. But I do think. Overall, for all runners, you are going to suffer a lot more in the heat. So definitely prepare for that. Even in the Olympics, you see, there's a reason why the world record never gets broken in the Olympics because it's pretty much always in hot weather. And I'm going to say it's at least 5% slower, and those are elite runners, so they're going to handle the weather a lot better than the amateur runners. So definitely, if you are running a hot race, and especially if you haven't before, you need to you know, have a look at this table. I recommend just to give yourself an estimate. And you know, the wor worst case scenario, if you you're too cautious, yeah, you only lose a few minutes. But if you're not cautious at all and you, you aim for the same time that you'd run in cool weather, you completely blow up, and you, you could be you know, half an hour, even an hour slower, depending on you know, how bad things go. But um, I'm going to leave the link to that below. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you have, just click the little bell right next to the subscription button. That will tell you every time I release a new video.